This is the fitting that goes into the top of the water tank uh, that's installed on the C1160. Uh, there's about three of these, um, two are used, and there's this spare one. And this is for plumbing, if you want to plumb you know, additional water uh, into the tank, and specifically for a water maker. So what I'm going to do is, um, I've taken this out, I'm going to drill through here um, a quarter inch and then tap it and the reason I want to tap it is that I've received these um, I'll explain what type of water maker that I decided to go with but this came from the water maker provider and these basically allow you to um, get a quarter inch fitting here and then the water plumbing hose goes in here so they sent me a bunch of these um, for the different size hoses that they run so I've got a quarter inch which is for the water feed out of the water maker and then there's a larger size which is for the salt water brine that goes into the overboard discharge and so what I'll do now is I'll drill and tap that uh, put it in place and uh, then we'll go through and I'll show you the rest of the setup for the water maker the one quarter uh, inch fitting and so I actually undid the fitting, tapped into it, and then connected this uh, hose. Uh, this is the water hose that's coming directly from the water maker. Before it gets here, it actually goes through uh, a three-way valve. So you can actually divert to test the water first. And then when you're happy with the water from the water maker, then you then divert it to this tank. So here's the setup here. And the way it's been plumbed in. Uh, this is spare on all of the sea wind tanks uh, and pretty easy to install. So here we have the installation of the water maker. Um, what you're seeing here is these ones here are actually the air conditioning unit. So we've got one here, there's another one uh, f further up. So they're not really related to the water maker at all. But the key point here is that there's two water intakes, one here and one here and both of those can be used just to run the air conditioning units or you can actually turn one off um, and then that um, goes through this diverter valve here and through into here and it's for the water maker and so this line here runs right up through uh, underneath uh, and around the side and um, this plums into the water maker main pressure pump and I'll show you that in another compartment. The main uh, part that makes the water is this part here and uh, this actually is a rain man unit and I'll go into detail why I chose the rain man unit a little bit later on uh, but basically it's very simple you've got your pressure gauge here um, you've got a diverter valve here so you can run water to the test tap so you can you know test your fresh water first and then you can turn it over uh, and then when it's in this direction it'll be taking water to the tank so the way this process works basically is uh, you've got these quarter inch hoses uh, and from they go through the water maker come out through the side here through this tap and then a diverter valve here. So this diverter valve can go, at the moment, it's to the tap for test. If I turn it that way, then water will go from here uh, into the main water tank. The other main thing about this unit is you have two, two osmosis membranes, and this can produce about 120 liters per hour. So it's a fair bit of water, fresh water that you can make. This is the brine outlet, and once again, this is plumbed uh, into the side. These units um, come in 12 volt and 240 volt. Uh, this unit is a 240 volt, and the main reason for going with 240 
is that the boat is already set up for, for 240. Um, you can run this either off the inverter or if we're running the generator, um, we'll just make water using the generator. And because it can produce 120 litres an hour, you only have to run this for an hour at most, two hours if you're using a lot of water. But our daily usage, even when we're diving and using lots of fresh water, uh, for two people is uh, well under 100 litres a day. This is the plowing under the sink. Uh, you can see the um, brine, which is the green discharge line. It's running right through to the back and then it ends up going through a through hole, just there. Uh, and out into the open ocean. There's also another line which is the test water that runs up through here and you can see there that it's actually um, bolted onto the uh, bottom spigot on, on the tap and if you come up the top here uh, this is where our test water comes out of here uh, and we can also use this to collect fresh water to uh, flush the system. So the system that we've chosen being Rain Man is fully manual. Uh, it doesn't do automatic flushing. Uh, it's a simple process of when you finish making water, run fresh water out of here for about another uh, five minutes to collect around about 20 liters of fresh water and then rinse that through the system just to, uh, to hold it and to, and to clean, it, clean all the salt water out and that's good to store then for the next uh, week or so. If you're not going to use it for longer than a week, um, we will generally pickle it and uh, pickle the, the whole water maker and that way it preserves the membranes. So this is the main pressure pump for the water maker. Uh, once again, this is a Rainman system. Uh, Rainman's design is a fully portable, um, but you can also hard install it, which is what I've done here. And the install fittings were supplied by Rainman. Uh, the beauty about this is it's still a fully uh, encapsulated unit, so it's very well protected. Um, I can still put lots of gear in the back here um, and, and not worry about it um, interfering with the unit. Plus there's easy access. Um, all the fittings on a Rainman system are very generic, so the pump fittings, etc., aren't specialised. You can buy replacement parts virtually uh, anywhere. Uh, this access hatch here is um, for the pump, so if you need, you should be servicing the oil in the pump about every hundred hours, uh, and that can be done through here uh, without having to remove the unit. So once again, this is 240 volt. Uh, and the way it's plumbed in is in the back here there is a um, 240 volt plug uh, and that can run off the generator or the uh, inverter and so we can use battery power to run this uh, it's 1300 watt um, so preferably you'd be using the generator but in an emergency uh, we can run this on our batteries alone just using solar power and um, it works quite well uh, so the way that I installed this is, first of all, I made up a uh, platform uh, within in the base uh, and then that's all been flow coded and actually the base was sicker flexed in, in uh, so at any point in time in the future if you want to remove this you could um, but it's definitely a hard install um, you know this is very very secure and you've got good access to the back here to change the uh, filters uh, Rayman just uses one filter system. Uh, overall, very happy with the system. When we looked at um, water makers, I looked at actually three different types. Uh, Spectra is the main one that's uh, used and put in the sea wind boats, generally if you order it from the factory. Um, they have a number of different options, um, but a Spectra installed is around about 11,000 US dollars uh, and it will only make um, between 60 and 80 liters per hour and they're a 12 volt system. Um, for me 60 liters an hour is really not enough. Um, if you had low tanks you'd be running it for five to six hours a day um, just to top 
up um, you know 400 liters so to me that's really not enough um, of what I want out of a water maker uh, the other option was the Ecotech. Uh, Ecotech off, offer the same. Um, the only difference with Ecotech, they're in about 6,000 US and they offer very similar specs to the Spectra. Uh, main difference though is that they're not a energy recoverable, so they're a little bit less efficient on 12 volt power. Uh, then the other option is to go for something like this. This is an Australian made product and is portable. It comes mainly as a portable unit with an option to do a hard install. Uh, difference in price, this is only 5,000 US uh, and uses generic parts. So if something goes wrong uh, while you're traveling, it's easy to get a new impeller and you don't have to chase around and go specifically to Rain Man uh, directly for the part. Uh, overall, pretty happy with the unit. So far, um, we've run around, run it for about um, uh, 30 hours and uh, it's, it's doing fine. So here's the unit that we ended up going with which is a Rain Man. It's a portable desalinator. Uh, what we've actually done though is taken the portable desalinator and um, done a hard install so it's permanently in the boat and you don't have to take it out each time to make water. Um, this is just a quick overview of the system, uh, how it comes and basically the unit when it first arrives uh, is in two parts, which is this part here and this part here and you can basically make water from when you pull out the box so it's already set up to go uh, in, in the portable. Um, there are different types here uh, you can buy their economy unit which is just one uh, membrane and do a hard install. Uh, what I ended up doing was going with this unit um, which has a two membranes, one two here um, and this does 120 liters per hour and then I did a hard install of this uh, and this unit here. So it's now permanently on the boat. And the unit works really well, very pleased with it. Uh, very easy access as a service hatch to change the oil. Um, oil needs to be changed, this is actually in the pump. Every 50 hours to start with when you first get it, you change the oil inside here. And then only every 500 hours after that do you have to uh, change it. And there's no uh, belts or moving parts uh, inside. So the maintenance on this is fairly low. And the beauty about it is that it, it's all manual. Um, you don't have to, you haven't got a computer controlling the desalination, it's very much up to you. Um, also for cleaning it and pickling it, it's a manual process, so once again, all very simple. Uh, so this can be run off our 12 volt system. Um, it can also be run off our Honda uh, genset. So our, our Honda genset runs this quite easily and it's a really good unit. 